Hello and welcome to a video that I haven't released for over a year. Uh, I think the last video that I uploaded was one of the films I made in uni. Uh, yeah, that's how long it, how how long it's been. Uh, so yeah, I decided I'm going to make a video uh, because I wanted to, and I'm going to make a video basically going over Adobe Audition, um, mainly looking at how to get your microphone hooked up, working, the settings, everything like that. Uh, I'm not going to be going into depth on, you know, making your audio sound better or anything like that. That I may save for a future video. This is mainly just getting down to the bare bones of, you know, getting a mic hooked up to your computer, um, going for the settings in Adobe Audition and all that stuff. So at the moment I'm currently recording this for OBS, so hopefully this is all working okay. First time I've done this. And we'll get right into it. So, this is Adobe Audition. This is how it should look when you first open it. Now I've recently reinstalled this so it should look like this. I'm using Adobe CC. Now, assuming you've got your microphone hooked up already, uh, we can go straight into this. If you haven't, then do that now, obviously. Now, um, I'm using a microphone hooked up to a sound mixer hooked up to my PC. So basically I have a Zoom H4n, which is a sound recorder. Um, but you can also use it as an audio interface. So I'm using that as an audio interface at the moment. I've got a microphone plugged in for an XLR cable, which I'm recording this with now. I'm using a uh, Rode NTG2 for anyone that's interested. Now, this is one way of doing it. Obviously, you can just use microphones directly plugged in for USB. I'm just giving it an idea of how this works. Now, for my scenario, this will make more sense as I go through the options. So we'll go into File. So not file, edit, uh, preferences. Now this may be different on the Mac side, I'm not sure. Uh, I've only ever worked with the PC side, so bear with me. Uh, down down to general. Now in here we can just jump straight into audio hardware. And this is where we start setting everything up. Now, as I said, I'm using a Zoom H4n. So it's going to come up as the H4. Uh, my output... Currently, I'm using a pair of wireless headphones, um, so I, this is correctly set. And the master clock, you generally want that set to your output as well. So if you are got a choice, make sure your master clock is set to your default output. Now, I don't know too much about the master clock, but I did some research. and Apparently, this is how you should do it. Um, you may want to do a bit further reading on this, just to clarify. Um, this is the latency. Now, latency uh, may also come up as buffer size. Now, basically, latency and buffer size is the same thing, essentially. You want this as low as possible, potentially. Now, by default, it's on 200 milliseconds. I think on the, if it's a buffer size that it's reading, I think it should be around 512. I, I can't remember. Anyway, um, so latency and buffer size. The idea behind this is... Obviously, if you know what latency is, it's kind of self-explanatory. So if your latency is really low, like 30, then when you're, when you're working with audio inside of the, the application, things will be more snappy, more real-time. The only downside to that is your machine may not be able to handle this. So generally speaking, you want to keep this in a, in a comfortable range. But I try to go as low as I can. And then obviously, if I if I start hearing audio clips, um, you know, slow downs, machine can't handle it, then I'll increase it. Now I haven't, I don't really go into this. Um, I haven't had a chance to to test this yet, so I'm going to keep this at 200 for now. But like I say, like obviously, if you have it at like 500, for example, the max latency, then you'll you'll start noticing a lot of delays, a lot of echoing, things like that. It will work, but it it it's to prevent dropouts essentially. So you want to keep this as low as you can but within working range and the sample rate now the sample rate may say in 48 or whatever and out mine's set to 48 on its own now this is because my microphone input is at 48 hertz and my output is at 48 hertz now earlier this was saying 48 in and 44 one out that's because my speakers were actually set up to 44100. I had to change them. So you have 44100. Now 44100 hertz is your basically CD audio. Mostly music and things like that runs at 44100. 4800 is more for things like video, I think. Uh, I generally record at 4800 as a standard. And it's just, just because obviously 4800 sounds better. You have a lot more air in the audio and things like that. And generally speaking, you know, 
it's better to work in a better sample range. It's up to you. If you're doing a simple voiceover, uh, you're just recording, just, you know, you don't, it's for YouTube or whatever. You could probably record it at 44 or 100. It doesn't really matter. But I would record it at 4800 as a standard anyway, if you can. Um, anyway, so, yeah, basically. Now, before you do any of this, um, you want to make sure this is all working okay. So I'll just click OK quickly. Now, how do I check my levels are going through? So if we double click here, you can see the microphone I'm using at the moment is inputting levels. Um, as I talk, this is going in. Now I'm hitting around minus three, minus six. Well, it's, it's a little bit high maybe, but we can change that. Now I'll keep this running for the time being. Now we'll go back into our preferences and we'll go back into our audio hardware. Now, again, the Mac, I'm not sure how you do this. Uh, I believe it's similar. Um, it should translate in the same way. Now, we go into our settings. Again, you can go also do this by going down here into playback and recording settings. Now, playback is obviously going to be this. So this is what I'm using at the moment to hear things. So, as I said before, my bitrate default format is 48 hertz, which is fine. Now recording. So at the moment we've got my webcam here, which I've, I'm not using. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is my microphone that I'm currently using at the moment. I will just go to properties and levels. And also you can also this is where you change the uh, the bit rate here that I was talking about. The uh, sorry, the um, sample rate set to 75. I may just reduce this a little bit just because I noticed uh, down here. I'm not sure if this is going to affect my um, recording, so bear with me. Still working? Okay, excellent. Um, so yeah, this is how you would do this. And you can also monitor this way as well. But uh, yeah. Now, when you're doing this, um, checking the levels and stuff, if you're using a preamp, like if you're using a, you know, a, an audio interface like I am, you'll want to do a thing called stage gaining. So at the moment on my Zoom, I've got it set so I can monitor the levels on there. And I'm monitoring the levels so my peaks don't go past about minus 12, minus 6. So you want to set your audio interface levels as high as you can go, but obviously not too high where you're clipping. And then when you plug this in to your computer, you then want to adjust the levels again so you can get them relatively high and not clipping. Uh, the idea is obviously you could set the levels really low on your audio interface. The problem is if you do that, when you then enhance the audio levels on your PC, you're also going to enhance a lot of that noise in the background because it's trying to amplify the low, you know, the, the low noise. So, you know, you want to get the audio sounding as good as you can on your interface and then you want to translate that over to your PC where you then can finally, you know, level it out again. So it's a, it's a two-stage process. Oh, obviously, if you just have a, a microphone plugged directly to your computer, like a USB microphone, then it's only going to be a one-stage level game, which you just go into here, into the recording, and change everything here instead. So, you know, it, it, it depends on what you're doing. Okay. Now, this is all relatively set up okay, I think. Yeah. That, that works better. It's, 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 still, it's still hitting the highs a bit, but we'll work with this. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, so... I actually clipped there. Now, if you go in... So, yeah, we covered this. So, um, you should be good with this. Now, an, an audio channel mapping. Basically, it's setting different channels, like device channels. And my microphone's going through the um, channel 1 on my, on my um, interface. So this would be the left channel, and there's nothing going in through the right channel. Uh, so yeah, um, you know you can play around with this if you have an interface. Like you can see here from my output, you know I've got my left and right channel, which is my headphones. These are unavailable because I don't have a five one setup. Um, oops. So yeah, like you can really play around with this if you have all the equipment hooked up, but I, I don't really have all this, so, you know, mine's quite a basic setup, so it's just literally this. Okay. So, that is the basics of hooking up a microphone and getting it to, to work inside of Audition. Now, 
Um, how do we record? Well, it's very easy. So obviously we just click record. So here we can decide how we want to set up a file. So we'll leave our sample at 48 hertz. Um, now because I'm recording just on a mono mic, I mean, if you're recording any uh, voices, um, I mean, you can use stereo. I I don't I don't really see the point. Um, if you're recording a single voice on a condenser microphone or whatever, um, use mono. There's no 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 need to use stereo uh, or five for one for that matter. So I'm going to use mono and the bit rate. Now I generally like to record at the highest bit rate, which is 32 float. Now that allows for a lot of processing and things like that. Gives you a lot of headroom when you're doing um, audio processing. So yeah, keeping a high bit rate is always good. Uh, I think by default most um, audio bit rates generally around 1624, but I think on here the default is 32 anyway. So just keep it at 32 bit. There's no need to go any lower than that. And now it's going to start recording everything I'm doing. So as you can see, it's recording everything. Um, so yeah, and uh, now if I just stop this, I can play it back. And now it's going to start recording everything I'm doing. So as you can see, it's recording everything. Um, so yeah, and uh, now if I just stop this, um, I do want to just go a little bit into something else, but I won't touch on it too much. Now, this is... Um, the waveform editor. This is how you record in the waveform. Now you can use a thing called multi-track. Multi-track is um, it better in some ways, but I like to use waveform for just recording a voiceover, and then you know with that I'll then build it into multi-track or whatever. But I'll just quickly switch over to multi-track. Now we've got a multi-track session. Now um, so basically you can name this whatever you want to do it. So let's call this I don't know, practice. Thingy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, follow location, I'll just keep this for default for now. And you have a bunch of templates you can use as well. So, you know, you have 24 track metal session, DJ, film sequence around, podcast. Um, you could play around with these. Basically, what this does, it will um, determine your settings here for you and also label all your um, tracks, which you'll see in a minute for you. So, if you're doing a podcast, it'll have like, you know, all the different podcast tracks, if you're doing a radio voiceover and music and stuff like that, I'll have a, you know, a central tracks of that. Um, but we'll keep it as none, because I like to like build this up as I go. Um, keep the sample rate as 48 hertz, as this is our recording sample rate, and, you know, what we're going to be working with, 32-bit float, keep that, and mono. as our master. Now, this is the multi-track, and this is basically it. Now, we can... For example, we can drag in our previous recorded audio here and play around with it here. Um, and we can also record in here, which is good. So we just hit the record key and you can see our levels are, are populating here. And if we just hit record, you can see we're now recording in the uh, multi-track session. Now this is really good, um, really handy as well if you're doing things like Foley, um, if you're, you know, recording for purpose, it, you're not just doing a simple, you know, talking to the mic type thing. Um, you know, you can also layer this up. So, I don't know, I've, re I've done my recording here. I maybe want to record on this track now. You know, maybe I'll, I'll layer it up underneath. Recording bum, bum, in bum, the bum, bum, uh, bum, bum. multi-track session. You know, now this is really, and then when I play this back, I should be able to hear them both. You can see we're now recording bum, bum, in bum, the. Bum, uh, bum. So, you know, you can, there's a lot of possibilities with multi-track recording, um, really fun to play with. And, you know, this is good for loads of different things. Um, I believe there's also a way, I haven't tried it yet, because I, I used to use Pro Tools a lot, so I'm not sure. But I, I'm pretty sure you can do this on here too, but I think you can also have a video here as well. So if you're doing, uh, you know, like I say, Foley, or if you're doing a voiceover for the trailer or something like that, I believe you can also link up a video here and then in real time record a voiceover using the multi-track.
and it's also good for you know building up uh, you know, sound design and things like that. Not saying this is a, a good replacement for Pro Tools, but it's um, you know it's definitely doable. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that was it basically. That is uh, essentially how you set things up and how you get things to work. Um, another thing, just before I go, like, like I could say, like if you have multiple microphones. Um, hooked up to this thing then you know you can also change this on the fly here too uh, as long as same with your outputs and your buses you can also add buses as well which is nice uh, so yeah uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else I may have missed or if there's things you want to know about um, I'll consider making some more videos on this if this gains any interest um, like I say it's been about a year since I made any videos. Uh, I didn't really feel like getting in front of a camera because it's too much hassle. I thought this would be nice, a nice simple way to do something for a change. I thought I'd do something educational. Um, you know, and this is something that people generally just want to know how to use. So I thought, fuck it, why not? Anyway, I will see you next time. <laughs>